everybody, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Victoria. I am a 23 year old woman of transgender experience and I make mostly LGBT content here on YouTube. If that's your thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and click the bell so you're notified whenever I make a new video and you can join the family. I have made so many transition tip videos, whether it's about passing, about makeup, about coming out, everything, you name it, I've got it. I'll have a playlist down below. But in this video, I wanted to give you just sort of my tips on what I wish I knew and tips that would have helped me along the beginning of my journey with or without hormones. Transitioning is a long process and it's unique to everybody. So some of my tips might not work for you. Some of your tips might not work for me and that's totally fine. Everyone's different. These are tips other than just like learn makeup, buy a new wardrobe, get on hormones, because those are sort of like baseline things. These are some tips that will help you along your transition with or without hormones and some things that I didn't really think of when I first transitioned and will hopefully really help you. But before I jump into this week's video, if it is your first time seeing me, my face, my channel, hi, how are you? Thank you so much for spending your time with me. While you're here, you might as well hit the subscribe button down below so you can join the family. We have a lot of fun. Follow all my social media in the description box down below. And without further ado, let's jump on into this week's video. My number one tip for when you first start your transition is to get a feminine haircut. It doesn't matter if you have short hair. It doesn't matter if you are just waiting for it to grow out. Still get like a, a pixie cut looks so different from just a boy's cut. You know, I'll have some pictures up right here. They look different and it's going to make your face look different. It's going to make people perceive you differently. You know, wigs, extensions, all these things are great and it will certainly make a difference. But at the end of the day, when you take all the makeup off and all the wigs and all that off, you're gonna want to look at yourself in the mirror and still see a feminine presenting person. So first things first, if you wanna be perceived more femininely, go to a salon, bring in some cute pictures of like, I don't know, Anne Hathaway's pixie cuts or, you know, just something that's a little more chic, something that's going to fit your face and I swear to you, it will make a world of a difference. Next up on my list, this pertains to anybody, whether you're trans or not, but transitioning is a very, very slow process. So it's important that during this process, you have a hobby or something outside of transition that is keeping your attention. So for me, it was art. I always loved painting and drawing, and I would throw myself into this reality that I created, and it was so therapeutic and nurturing to me. Now that has shifted to books and plants and other things, but it is so important that you find some kind of hobby. It could be video games, it could be hiking, it could be sports, it could be literally anything, but find some kind of hobby that makes you feel fulfilled as a person, not just as a trans woman. You know, if you are spending all of your time just looking in the mirror, waiting for things to change, if you are only documenting your transition, only watching trans YouTubers like me, then you are always thinking about it. It's like being in class and looking at the clock and waiting for it to pass. Like that's not, it's not gonna make it go by any faster. It'll just make it go by slower. So have things to distract yourself. Make some new friends, which we'll get to in a minute. There is so much more to life than transition. And once you get to where you wanna be, eventually that can start being like, okay, what's next? Well, now I need my nose done. Now I need this done. Because your world and your hobbies are transition. So take some time for introspection. Take some time to figure out what it is that you like and throw yourself into those hobbies. Next on my list is to work on your voice. This is one that I think all of us are very sensitive about. I've definitely talked about this in previous videos. I myself am not a perfect person, um, but your voice is your second face. Think about how many times you've been in public and there was someone that was very androgynous, not necessarily trans, but mm, could be a boy or a girl. And then they open your mouth and you're like, oh, that's a girl or the other way around, not in a malicious way, not in a malicious way. Your voice, like I said, is really your second face. So you want to make sure that you work on that. You don't want to be looking like Jay and Seton, like Tarzan or the other way around. There are a lot of YouTubers who give vocal coaching lessons both on their channels and privately. I've talked about her a million times, but Zoe Alexandra is wonderful, a huge help to the trans community. So I'll link her down below. Please go check her out. That is how I got from my old voice to where I am now. Hormones, if you're transitioning from male to female, do not change your voice. 
So that's something that you have to actively work on. And trust me, investing in vocal lessons is something I have not done, but it's worth it, especially at the beginning. So if you're transitioning before hormones, maybe you wanna start your transition, but not come out to everyone yet. Take the time to work on your voice in private. I promise it will pay off in the long term. Something I found to be very important at the beginning of my transition was deciding on the kind of woman that I want to be. Not deciding, but opening my horizons and imagining who I want to be post-transition. Think of your inspirations. Maybe you want to be as beautiful as Princess Diana, as brave as Malala, as creative as Erica Badu. And think about what it is that you like about these people. Is it their drive? Is it their bravery? Is it because they're a mother and they're nurturing? Think about who you want to be in a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, because this is a forever thing. A great way to manifest this and really affirm this in your head is to journal. Write down what you want to be, who you want to be, where you might want to work. You know, if you want children in the future, where you would want to live. It kind of takes you out of the, the present, the now, the uncomfortableness, the dysphoria, and reminds you that there is a future for you and there is absolutely a possibility to be a happy, healthy, and successful trans person in this world. If you are just starting your transition or maybe you're thinking about surgeries and you're just diving into it, first things first, please research what your insurance covers and what it does not cover. Surgeries, hormones, these things are all very expensive, but for the most part, insurance will cover it or reimburse you for it. This will change depending on where you live. I am personally in the United States, so we have privatized healthcare. There is also public healthcare. I am not a part of, so I can't really speak on that. If your current insurance does not cover that, don't fret, it's okay. You can always switch insurance carriers. You can pick up an additional insurance carrier. I know for a fact that Starbucks actually covers quite a bit of trans surgeries. A good sis of mine actually just got a job at Starbucks and she's already scheduling her SRS. So if that tells you anything, anything is possible, y'all. Trust me, as someone who waited until the last second, trust me, you wanna know if your insurance does or does not cover it before you even know that you want the surgery. Because once you decide that you're ready and you want the surgery, if you're anything like me, you want it yesterday. You want it before you even realize that you wanted it. And insurance makes you jump through so many hoops to get things covered. Oftentimes they'll say that they do cover something and then they'll deny it. It's a long process, but trust me, you're not alone. Reach out to your hormone provider, reach out to your mental health care professionals, any resources you have out there, a gender and sexuality center, whatever. There are so many people who are available to you and want to help you along your journey. And lastly on my list is to find a community of trans people just like you. This could be in group therapy. This could be making friends online. Be careful with that but it's an option. This could be going to your local queer areas, whether that's an LGBTQ center, whether it's a bar, a gay coffee shop, somewhere where you can meet queer people, specifically trans people that are like you, in my case being a transgender woman, because having that community of people like you is so reassuring, it's so healing, and it feels nice to know that you're not alone in this. There are going to be times that you want to just talk to someone and vent to someone who really gets it. There are going to be times that you have questions about procedures or doctors or a guy that you think might be a chaser but you're not sure. Just having that community of your sisters or brothers if you're a trans man or siblings if you're non-binary, whatever. Having that community is so important. So reach out, find out how you can connect to these people. I promise that we're not hiding. There is not a ton of us, but we are out there. Before I got to college, I had never met another trans person in my life, ever. And once I got there, I met all sorts of trans people and trans women just like me that had been living in my state this whole time. It's really a matter of putting yourself out there. It's, someone's not just gonna fall into your lap, just like dating. No one's just gonna appear out of nowhere and be your Prince Charming or whatever. You have to go out and try and meet people. That can be intimidating. I mean, I myself am an introvert and although I make videos and I'm like, whoa, online, I'm a pretty shy person. But if I can make friends and I can have that community, then so can you. I will also say, 
if you do not already have this resource available to you for someone to vent to, get a response from, ask questions, I myself am available on wizio.com slash Victoria Rose. I will link that in the description box down below. I get a lot of emails and DMs and stuff from people asking me questions. And if I sat down and responded to every one, I would be typing all day long. So if you like, there is a, an option to get a personal video from me, even a phone call from me to talk through whatever you're going through. But I highly recommend that you have a foundation, a community of people that you trust. Again, we are out there. We are here for you and you are not alone. All right, you guys, those are my tips for transitioning with or without hormones. I want to say before I end this video, that a little off topic from this, I am thinking about making a few changes to my channel. I want to see how you guys feel. I want to do sort of a combination of vlogging, maybe some self-care things, get a little bit more personal and a little more creative in my videos. I would also love to do more of a commentary sit down style like Madison Brown, for example, or Salem Tovar, where I can, you know, get done up, have a pretty backdrop, have a microphone in front of me, and talk about something important to me. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. Um, I'm probably gonna do some of them either way, but I would love to know any of your suggestions because at the end of the day, you are the ones consuming this and I wanna make good content for you. Also, I wanted to acknowledge that I have been a little MIA recently, uh, missing an action. I normally post every Wednesday, but it has been a minute since I posted regularly on a Wednesday. I've just been dealing with some personal issues, some mental health struggles, and I would love to get into that a little more in depth in a future video, like I was saying, with those self-care vlogs. So um, yeah, just letting you know that I haven't forgotten about you. I love you guys so much, and it makes me so happy to come on and talk to you guys and read all your comments. I really hope you all enjoyed this week's video. If you did, make sure you please give it a big thumbs up. It helps out my channel so much. Share with anyone that you think might need it. And if you were not already part of the family, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button down below so you can join the family and never miss out on a new upload, usually every Wednesday with a bonus one about once a month. Y'all know I've been slacking. I am a lot more active on social media, particularly Instagram. So I will link all of that in the description box down below. Make sure you follow me there. I know transitioning is hard. And to be honest with you, it continues to be hard. I am years and years, almost a decade actually, into my transition and it's still difficult. But just know it does get better and that there are so many people out here, including me, that are rooting for you. You are all so important to me and I tell you see you next Wednesday. Good luck, I love you, bye.